What is up my beautiful cash crew? Today on the video agenda, we have natural nail prep, the great, the awesome e-nail couture press on system, a whole lot of filing, and some fun nail art. I will also be introducing my supplies, tools, implements, and products, and giving my honest opinion of each of them. So this is e-nail couture's press on gel system. This is what I use on my own nails. This product is very close to my heart, and it lasts just as long as acrylics or other gels. This is the base coat. The bottles are so cute. Look at this adorable top. This is the press on gel that pairs with the full cover 1, 2, 3, go nails and there are so many to choose from. This gel comes in clear and pink. The pink gel makes pink and white so easy. All you have to do is carve out the white because your pink back fill is already behind the full cover nail. But as cool as it is, we'll be using the clear today. Now presenting my favorite top coat in the world. With the cutest little cap, this lays on so thick and shiny. I have yet to find a glossier top coat and I've tried them all. And the bottles are decent size. Enel Couture's bottles are 12 milliliters, which is extremely close to iGel Beauty's 15 milliliters, which is the biggest bottle I can find. The full cover nails I'm using today are extra large squares by the brand Tulip. I pre-prepped them off camera by sizing them, filing them to fit, beveling the cuticle edges, etching the inside with my drill, and wiping the inside clean with alcohol. I etch the inside with my drill on a low speed. e Couture's full cover nails come pre-etched on the inside, which would make this step unnecessary. So guys, if you know me, you know I love some rainbow titanium. This is my OPI pusher and I love it. It is my favorite pusher I've ever had and I've gone through a lot. I will say it's a little overpriced, but you can't put a price on beauty, right? My cuticle nippers came from a school kit and they are nothing special. I dole these guys all the time, so I just use whatever I have. My e-file is a Medicools Turbo File 2 from Amazon. Here I use a very very low speed, just a click passed on, so slow that it stops when pressure is applied because I don't want to give myself the red ring of death on my natural nails. Notice I use a fulcrum finger, which is a fancy way of saying I use my pinky to balance the drill. When roughing my natural nails, I like to get the corners first, then I do the whole nail plate. On natural nails, use a fine sanding bit, and always make sure that each client has their own bit, as the bits can draw blood and we don't want to spread bloodborne pathogens. Depending on your state, you can store their bits in a bag with their name on it. After prepping, we cleanse. This is my solution pump containing rubbing alcohol. It's also monomer proof and made of pretty purple tinted glass. It satisfies standards because each pump gives you fresh solution. I get the highest percent of alcohol I can find paired with lint-free nail wipes. Prepping the nail is so important to make your nails last. Removing all the oil and dirt is vital. I like to go from my pinky to my thumb so I don't deposit oil from my hands back on my freshly prepped nails. Avoid touching anything. I use ASP dehydrator and I've never had a problem with it. One dip can last for your whole hand, but I like to dip it between each finger. I use it very generously. Now hey, ho, base. Coat. This is the Press On Nail base coat from Enel Couture. It is different from gel polish base coat. Do not get them confused. Do not touch your cuticle and do not flood your cuticle. I wipe all of the extra base coat off of the brush before I start, and less is more. One dipped and wiped brush can last multiple fingers. Dipping between each finger will lead to cuticle flooding. I did my pointer to my pinky all with one dip, and if I ever need more, I just get the very tip wet. LOL, that's what he said. <laughs> my lamp is UV and LED. It's the Sun C4 Plus, and it is 256 watts. Wow. The presets are 10, 30, 60, and 99 seconds. It has a motion sensor that turns on when you put your hand in the lamp starts counting up and doesn't stop until you remove your hand. Or you can hit the preset and it starts counting backwards from that number and turns off when it hits zero. It's detachable from the base and has 57 lights and the motion sensor works so good. This thing is so lightweight and has a cute little handle. I love, love, love it. It's seriously the best lamp I've ever used. So since I was playing with my lamp, I'm going to cleanse my fingers again and now the press-on gel. My tactic for securing press-ons is like this. I get ready by holding the press-on in between my fingers. You only get one shot, so it's a good idea to do a test run and make sure the press-on nail fits the finger that you're about to apply it on. Next, I generously apply the press-on gel to the whole free edge of my fingernail and some of my nail plate, but not around the cuticles. I dip the brush in the bottle again to make sure that I have a generous amount on the brush. Then I saturate the entire cuticle area of the press-on. When I press the nail on my finger, I start from the cuticle area and roll it forward slowly. Hold until you can get to your lamp. It's better to have one of those egg lamps, but if you don't, this is how I do mine. I press the button first with the lamp sitting on my lap. I put the press on on, hold it, and then put it in between my legs, which will be under the lamp. Don't judge me. It's not ghetto. It's ghetto fabulous. So now we're just repeating the same process. This time let's do it backwards though. 
apply a generous amount on the press on and then apply a generous amount on your natural nail across the free edge and around your nail plate but not in the cuticles when we apply the press on the reason that we start from the cuticle and roll it to the tip is so that air bubbles don't get in there if we just pressed it on parallel it would cause air bubbles which would cause liftage air bubbles or incorrect prepping is the reason that your clients come back and say oh my god i broke a nail while we're on the subject i'm going to say another thing about prepping this is the best advice I can give you for clients that come back with lifted nails. If it's not the prepping and it's not the air bubbles, then it must be them. Don't tell them that, but try this. While prepping, I literally have a wrestling match with their hand. I hold it firmly with my hand, and if they try to use their hand to brush their hair behind their ear or use their cell phone, I say no, and I hold their hand perfectly still. Reason being, when they brush their hair behind their ear, they touch their skin and deposit oil on their prepped nail, which causes lifting, which makes them unhappy. They might get frustrated when you don't let them text, but they'll be happy when their nails stay on correctly. You might also explain politely while you're holding their hand hostage. I usually start that conversation on the dehydrator step after I cleanse, and I tell them I'm going to hold their hand still until the nails are applied. Explain that after all of the nails are applied, they can scratch their nose and use their phone again. They'll probably get an itch while you're holding their hand still. It always happens, but just use it as a conversation piece to laugh and goof around. It's your name on these nails. The client isn't going to say, I wouldn't sit still and I kept getting my prep nails dirty. They're gonna say, oh, that girl sucks. And every time I go to her, my nails lift. Don't be that nail tech. Now back to work. This is my Miss Sweet nail dust collector. I got it off Amazon for really cheap and I absolutely love it. You can take out the filter like this and the fan is underneath. I got it a long time ago, so if you can't find this one, just try to look for the same style one. In the biz, we call this eyeballing. To turn your filter into an air freshener, Use downy unstoppables, especially if you use acrylic. If you just pour a few of these on your filter fan, then it spits out good smelling air. It's amazing. Irrelevant side shout out. If you don't have a filter fan and don't want to use ugly paper towels, use a dental bib. They're easy on the eyes, splash proof, and come in hella different colors. Now for protecting your own nails, ladies. I like color track gloves in the shade of black. If those aren't in your price range, get some nitro gloves. Now warning, you may fall asleep on this next part. Pretty much it's just a whole lot of filing. To skip filing, resume video at 9 minutes and 45 seconds. For you amazing people who choose to stay, I'm going to tell you a little story. This one time at nail camp, I stuck a whole nail up my nose. <laughs> just kidding. Little joke for the American Pie generation. Anyways, back to business. This is how I tackle filing nails. I start with the side perimeters. I file underneath and I try to make them come straight out from my nail. Straight out from my side wall to be exact. The goal is to make it look like the nail is actually growing from your natural nail and easiest to view from the side. If you accidentally applied one of the nails on crooked, it's okay. This is where filing comes in handy. Just file, file, file and overcompensate until the nail appears straight. If the nail starts to appear thinner on top that's okay you can file the free edge until the nail starts to appear wider this goes back to eyeballing things don't have to be actually perfect as long as they look okay one mistake you can't come back from though is over filing once you file the nail too much you can't fix it you have to remove the nail and start over so when filing pause often and look at the progress so let's do a little recap. When shaping, we first file the perimeter and then file the free edge. Here's a little tip when filing the free edge of square nails. First of all, don't file parallel. File perpendicular with the file. In other words, don't go left and right. Go forward and backwards. And second, the angle count. If you bend the file towards your palm, you're not going to have a straight free edge. It's going to look like a little hill or mountain. The correct way to do it depends on what shape you're looking for. If you want a perfectly flat free edge, do it perfectly perpendicular at a 90 degree angle. But if you want a concave free edge, bend the file slightly towards your nail plate or the back of your hands. I recommend using a file for your perimeter. It creates crisp, clean, straight edges. So fresh and so clean, clean. When filing the free edge of full cover nails, I like to take the stress off the nail by putting my thumb at the base of the nail where my natural nail is for extra support. It takes the stress off the nail itself and your nail bed. Your matrix will probably thank you as well. Man, if you want to talk game changers, the filing vent fan is amazing. I used to hate doing nails just because of the nail dust. I couldn't stand it. There's so much of it. And the dust vent totally eliminates it. It's little investments like that that change the game. Now, presenting 
the famous pinky hold. There's several, but here are my two favorites. The half nail sin. <laughs> Get it? Nail sin? <laughs> and then the best for last, the full nail sin. This is a maneuver we use when we are filing our own pinkies and our pinkies are getting very tired. Let me know in the comments what you think about the nail sin. So now I'm using a medium grit sanding bit on a mandarin to etch the top of my extension prepping for gel polish application. This just ensures that the gel polish doesn't peel up because it's on a smooth surface. I've also been known to use primer at this point instead of etching, although etching is the best way to go. Now before you come at me in the comments, I know, this isn't where you normally use primer. You use them on natural nails, but hey, it works for me. Sanitation time. I like to use Dawn soap, warm water, and a nail brush. Dawn soap because it removes oils very well. To help memorization on state boards, say sanitation every time you wash your hands. Sanitation means removal of debris, while sterilization is removal of all the bacteria. So after sanitizing my hands, aka washing them, I like to let them completely dry and then use a lint-free wipe with alcohol to cleanse them. For gel base, we're using Beetles Foundation at 15 milliliters, huge. This is different from the press-on base coat. This is the gel polish foundation. Although I'm using the Beatles foundation, gel polish base coat is something I'm not so picky with. I feel like most of the popular brands get the job done, so don't be afraid to bargain hunt when you're buying your base coat. Some of my favorite base coats include Beatles, Born Pretty, Model One, Eye Gel Beauty, OPI, Madam Glam, Jellish, all of which have amazing gel polish lines also. So find the one that fits your budget. For low budget, I suggest Beatles. For the high, I say Madam Glam. For buying in bulk, Eye Gel Beauty. A common problem when using gel polish is having a bulbous free edge after the top coat. To avoid this problem, it's important to use thin coats of gel on each layer and ensuring the gel doesn't gather at the free edge. And of course, don't forget to cap those ends, just like we bust caps and loose ends. So this is Dover Q Gel Polish and it is jelly variety in black. I got it on Amazon. It came in a pack of 20. It's a lot of bang for your buck and it has the cutest pink bottles. Comment if you want me to swatch these if you're thinking about buying them and want to see them first. I love jelly gels. They're a bit translucent. So moving on, I'm going to use McCart rhinestone glue to create a skeleton finger. Unfortunately, my bottle busted for no reason, so I have to scoop it out of the cap because it leaks. Good glue, bad packaging. I'm starting with the tip of the skeleton finger, which we're going to create with 11 crystals in color white. Now, if you're going to buy these, be careful and don't get the opaque white crystals. Now guys, when you see the price, you're going to be like, what? But they're a lot higher quality than rhinestones. Rhinestones are plastic while crystals are glass. They reflect light better and don't scratch so easy. Now, in attempting to do this look, I tried one on the left and one on the right. Let me know which one you guys think looks more like a skeleton hand. Now it is time for the beautiful Enel Couture top coat. Look at how thick and juicy this is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> LOL. That's what he said. No. If you really want these things to shine like an ex-boyfriend's diamond grill, the key is to avoid getting top coat on the facets. Facets are the cut, flat surfaces that give it the geometric shape of a diamond. But if you do mess up, it's okay. Just remove it with alcohol on a brush. Now we're going to make some smile lines with the smile line cutter. These things are seriously amazing and they make creating smile lines so much faster and easier. Of course, I had to get mine in my favorite color ever, rainbow titanium. I'm just kind of showing you all the different shapes that they have, and each shape has all different sizes. You can use them as a stencil for gel polish or to cut acrylic before it dries, of course. For this design, I've chosen a very deep smile line, and for the nude, I chose Eye Gel Beauty's Ruffle Trim. Just as a side note, these swatches that go on the tops of your bottles are pretty awesome. Brands like Madame Glam already come with the top swatch, but for brands that don't, there's these. Now we're getting to the down and dirty, guys. Look how amazing the smile line cutters work. That line is clean AF, y'all. And it literally takes seconds. If you work in a salon, this tool will up your productivity and up your money game. It's so easy to use. You just find the shape and spot you want it, press it into the base coat so it sticks, and then paint your smile line. Then you can remove it to address your cuticle area. Now we going in for the second coat. And ladies, it is looking fire. The ruffle trim is a thicker consistency, so it's kind of building up height. Now this black, I do not like. It's ASP and it is so translucent. I had to do so many coats. 
I don't recommend buying it unless you're in a pinch or something like I was. That's the only reason I bought it personally. I broke a nail. Halloween was coming up. It was real serious stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, don't want to exclude anybody. I love all of y'all. Another thing I don't like about this ASP polish is you have to put it on so thin because if you make it a little thick, it wrinkles when it cures. Ugh. As a matter of fact, if you know a way to avoid the wrinkling on certain brands like this, post it in the comments. Let your girl know. Share in your wealth of knowledge, please. Giving is living. Sharing is caring. Now going in for that pointer finger. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love this tool. I can't get over it. I don't get paid by them or anything. It's just something I sincerely, honestly adore. <laughs> I actually don't even know what brand they are. I do, however, know that I got them off Amazon. Good ol' Amazon, right? <laughs> now I'm just finishing up before we go to the black again. And this time I'm starting out with the smile line. I've been doing this for 10 years and I'm still learning as I go sometimes. I have this video chaptered, so if you want to skip ahead to the nail art, feel free to do that now. I left the repetitive stuff for people that are learning. Sometimes it helps to watch something over and over again. It's the only way to learn. Well, not the only way. I retract that statement. <laughs> Since this is just... So now I'm removing the inhibition layer, prepping for nail art. I love Beetle's A599 gel polish. It's so solid white. And to apply it, we are using Savaland art brushes. These things are so beautiful. I love the diamonds in the backside. It deserves a little photo shoot. Oh yeah, that's it. Right there. Work it. Work it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I find with longer lines, I like to use longer art brushes. It gives you better control and cleaner, crisper lines. I'm going to choose this skinny one so I can make finer lines. So I started art prematurely. We're going to run it back to the shaper. It's kind of like nail builder and I love it. It is so crystal clear. It's a good one. Worth the buy, guys. But it is a little pricey. The reason I'm using this is because it's so thick. It helps balance out and shape the nail. When I went to do my nail art, I realized I had a problem. I didn't edit it out because I feel like this is a real life situation that I want to address. Things don't always go as planned. And when they don't, you have to improvise. It's what makes a great nail tech. So my goal is to build some height on the entire free edge of the nail. I created a visible slope on my stress area. This happened because the nude color was so much thicker than the black. As I layered it, it gained height. The black gel was so thin it didn't measure up and left a slope. Now I'm going to encase it in builder gel and then file out the pretty shape. Everything will be even and we'll live happily ever after. I'm going to do several layers on each nail until they're even. If they're not even, then I'm going to keep adding layers. If they're even after one layer, then we'll leave it at one layer. The whole goal is just to even out the nail. We want to have a smooth canvas for our nail art. If you don't have the shaper, you can use so many different things. You can use acrylic, builder gel, any type of clear gel, really. You could always give it a go at just filing. But if that's the route you go, make sure you don't file off the black. And now I'm cleansing inhibition so I don't ruin my file. 
At this spot in filming, I looked around and noticed how chaotic my work area was. Oh my goodness. And you guessed it, more filing. I used a hand file this whole video, but I also have a video of how to use an e-file. Check it out. I don't know why I gravitate towards the file. Maybe it's because if you build a clean enough nail, you don't need to grind a whole lot down. You just need to balance out the shape a little bit and make sure everything's smooth and even. There's a couple reasons I would suggest using a file if you're a beginner. Reason one is because files are flat. I love using them to create flat surfaces and making sure everything's even, like I just said. Sometimes when you use an e-file, you can produce dips and grooves and stuff like that. It makes things easier, but it also makes it easier to mess up. The second reason I would have a beginner use a file is because you have to live with your building mistakes. If you build a bulky nail, you have to tediously file it all down. Okay, filing review. If you file at this angle, you're going to get a hill. If you file at this angle, you're going to get a concave tip. Now if we look at the nail head on, you'll notice we have a shape like this. This is the shape that we're going for. So to get that, we're going to have to file this way. Just like this.
when I was filing, I filed a little hole in the gel. No problem, it's an easy fix. Just cover it up and then blend the edges of the gel so it doesn't look like a spot job was done. Ta-da! Finally, some hand-painted nail art. Woo! We're going in on a freshly filed nail with some white gel polish. As I do each hand, I make sure the pattern is mirrored perfectly. And now we're going in with some pearlescent pigment powder. It's from Baltic Day Pure Soul in the color Space. The Beetle's white gel didn't have a good inhibition layer, so I'm tapping gently on wet gel with pigment loaded on my brush, making sure not to smudge the design. This is another Baltic Day Pure Soul pigment in the color Plum this time. And oh my goodness, you guys, this kit came with a hundred different pigments. It's amazing. There's every color imaginable. Great deal. I initially dust off with this facial brush with a little dust dust, but then I go in and rub it clean with a lint-free wipe, making sure to get all the pigment off. Now I'm going in with Model 1's top coat. I labeled it a concealed top coat because this isn't the top coat that's going to be on the top of this nail. The lines came out too thick on the last nail with a rough surface. So this time I'm going to try to do it on top of a top coat and see if it comes out any smoother and finer. This top coat is awesome and affordable. Now I'm going in with the dotting tool. I don't know what brand I got it on Amazon though. And we're going to make some little star bling. We start with a dot and then pull it outwards in all four directions. If you mess up, just remove it with a little bit of alcohol. Just like dad taught us to do with our emotions and feelings. And I was right. Going in on top of a top coat is much more smoother. It's also easier to erase mistakes. When I messed up on the pinky that was rough after filing, it wouldn't just remove with a wipe and alcohol. I had to buff it off. Doing it with top coat is much more user friendly, you guys. Bling! And now adding some little bling bling dots. And just so you know, you don't need a dotting tool. Honestly, a simple toothpick works just fine. And now we're gonna get a little pink action. I'm using MAC Makeup's pink pigment in the color Magenta Madness. So I don't know if they still have this, but let me tell you guys. I am 31 and I've had this pot of pigment since I was a teenager in high school. I've been using this thing my whole life and haven't even put a dent in the top amount of it yet. Look at it, it still looks completely full, like untouched full. I remember it being super expensive to the point I was like, oh, I'm not sure if I want to get that. But man, do you get a lot of bang for your buck. And this pigment is true to its color, even as makeup. You put this stuff on your eyes and oh my gosh, it is hot, hot, hot pink, just like in the pot. This pigment is just like my ex-boyfriend. It is for everybody. <laughs> Now we just went in and fixed some spots that weren't dark enough for my liking and now they look great so it's time to move on. We are starting with the top coat again because top coating before you do the pigments is way better. And since it worked so well on the thumb, I'm going to just go ahead and top coat all the nails that I have remaining. Yas queen, look how much smoother and finer those lines are. So much better. Thank you, Model 1's top coat. Whoop whoop! And now we're going in on the purge mask. I made this at Halloween time, so I'm sorry if it's a little outdated. It took me a while to edit. <laughs> Speaking of editing, it took me like weeks to edit this thing. It takes a lot of money to invest just to do these videos and it takes so, so much time to make and edit and voice over them. I'm already on my 613th voiceover and that's only the amount that I kept. So it would mean a lot if you guys smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to start posting every week. And I'm going to try different things too. So my next video, I'm not going to talk so much. Let me know what you guys think, good and bad. I would love to hear your feedback because I want to do what makes y'all happy. Here we have some Born Pretty Glitter Gel and it is color CR01. When I have glitter, I like to make sure it's very mixed up because glitter is heavier so it tends to sink to the bottom. I like to give it a good mix, mix, mix. Sometimes I even will store it upside down while I'm getting ready to use it. The mixing was done with the Style Pro Mixer. The mixer definitely gets a 10 out of 10. It comes with a bowl for your makeup brushes to clean and dry them. It's crazy and it works amazing. 
So now we're just outlining the smile lines with some glitter. I feel like you should always add glitter. Glitter never fails to make everything better. Everything? Everything. Outlining your smile lines gives you a few advantages. First off, they don't have to be so perfect and it's okay if you messed up. Just cover it up with some glitter and it will look amazing. Another cool advantage is you can make the nude area look bigger or smaller depending on where you draw your smile line. If you outline in the nude area, it makes it look smaller. If you outline in the black area, it makes it look bigger. It also gives you the opportunity to cover up places where you filed too much, like there. Oh, we're on the home stretch, guys. We're beginning on our final top coat, which goes to Enel Couture. Woo! I love how thick and glossy it is. It is absolutely amazing. I will show you what they look like four weeks from now at the end. But for now, we're going to use this Light Elegance Number no. 2 dotting tool and this McCart rhinestone glue to create some fabulous crystal bling rings around my nails. Yeah. To create this crystal ring, we're going to use some iridescent Yuzevin crystals. And oh my gosh, listen to me. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. These are AB crystal dupe. I repeat, AB crystal dupe. They even came with this cute little rhinestone picker upper. It has diamonds inside of it. Super, super, super cute. And it has a wax end for picking crystals up. And it has a hollow pokey end to push them down. And they look like this. And this. Create the bling ring by making a line of medium-sized crystals with pairs of very small crystals in between. Like the smallest you got. We're straightening them out. Wipe away the excess glue. And cure. Another Enel Couture top coat. Another nail done. We're doing our part to keep the top coat off the crystal facets so they keep their amazing bling. This is what we're left with four weeks later. A little bit of grow out. We lost a crystal on the bone finger, but overall they held up great. Now we have reached the end of the video, Cash Crew. Subscribe and like.